Jeez. Good morning, guys. Hopefully we catch some seals or surfers. Who knows? All right. Let's... So we're bringing out two Buranos here. Nin's Burano and my Burano. I'm going to be rocking the 200 to 600. Just testing it out. And we're Just here at it. Huntington Beach, California. Trying out this vlog. Vlog type deal. Vlog life. Documenting the process. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's go. On to lay. Uh, I think I'd adjust the, uh, the autofocus speed. I happen to be in the menu. So right out of the box, it comes out five and five. But I think it's a little too responsive and too fast. But it locked on pretty well, pretty quickly. And the transition speed, I can reduce it down to maybe three or four, depending on the subject that we're trying. Yeah, we've been finding it's tracking these surfers really quickly. The autofocus is very powerful here. Yeah. Just locks on, like, instantaneously. There's no lag, there's no delay, it just locks on. So that's a huge step up from the FX6 and FX, FX line in general. Uh, if you're experienced in the FX line and you try this, you might see a huge jump. So we got the mid-49 accessories top plate, hit top handle here. We got a Zacuto VCT. 7200 with the 1.4 teleconverter, Dionic 150s, and then this is a wooden camera V mount to gold mount plate. Their new micro one, right? Yeah, the micro one. Uh, there's a Komodo version, but obviously. We yeah, I have. I'll show you my Raptor Komodo version. I actually quite like it. It's not. There's not that much play at all. Uh, it sits on the Anton Bauer uh, XT 150 GM. Pretty much good counterweight. Uh, 503, bright, small HD, and we're good to go. Cool. And then I have the core, running the core gold mount batteries. And then this is the Raptor version, micro V mount to gold, plenty of clearance. And I'm getting good battery life. It's like th almost three hours. Hi. Same thing here, mid-49 accessories, mid-49. Uh, Zagudo, BCT plate. So yeah, we're finding the autofocus is picking up these guys so fast. It's really reliable. Like, uh, it's tracking them through the waves. Super impressive. I mean, I'm on this 200 to 600 mil lens. Nin's on the 70 to 200 with a teleconverter. I got a really good ride one. So here's my only quick issue you can't change recording is it format the, the resolution the, the recording time base or no no, no the, wait, the, the uh, like if you if we're in 23 and 8 and you want to go jump in snq or no, that's pretty easy so i i, I map my snq to number two mm. so, uh, you hit that you're going back to 23 9 8 takes a, yeah, about like five seconds hit number two you go back to 60 pretty fast um the only thing I can't change is the recording format, uh, not the codec. So like if I want to jump from 5.8K to 8K, um, I would have to go through the menu. So you go to, go to full menu. Yeah. So basically you, you want to find a faster way of Or a quick that. menu. Or if the quick menu, I would have to rummage through, find an image scanner, and switch through that. Oh, I see. Um, but there's because you're saying it's fan it's faster to do that in Venice than it is in this camera. Uh, kind of the same speed, but it's a little bit, a little bit more access to it. Um, you can't format the card on any of these quick menus. Basically, ideally, if you have it very similar to the Venice menu where you can format cards and all that, I think it'd be much easier. Um, there's no media option. There's no. I think if I hit home, nope, it doesn't. See, yeah. So these are only the, the six men. Yeah. yeah. So there's not much that I can go further. But what I did find out is pretty interesting is that if you hit this home display, it can give you a cleaner SDI. Out over, like instead of having. Oh yeah, I noticed that too. So instead of having the overlays everywhere. Yeah. If you hit home, it can give you a cleaner. Um, 
with all the essentials, time code, audio. What are your thoughts on the Burano today? Like initial impressions, what do you think? It actually wasn't that heavy. So I was, I had the 200 to 600 mil, you know, Sony email lens and granted it's not, that's not a heavy lens at all. But it was, it was easy to, you know, walking out onto the pier. It's like, it, the camera's like not that heavy. Um, but I didn't have any monitors and GAC on there. I just had the, the basic uh, L, uh, LCD on there. So that's your initial impression of, of like the, just the, the weight or build quality? It, it's really solid. Um, firing it up fires really, really quickly, a couple seconds. And I think that my initial, my biggest takeaway was like how, how quickly the uh, autofocus works and how intelligently it works. And I, and I kept it at a 6.3 on the stop, you know, which, you know, that helps a lot when you're shooting that deep of a stop on focus, but still, it was, it was tracking, it was tracking them really well. I've been shooting so much with the FX6 lately. That camera, and along with the 9, has so many buttons, like, on the side where you kind of have access to every tool you'll need on, on the side. Whereas this one, I'm still learning about which assignables I need to assign and and then I, I later on actually like was testing out the ND auto just because like on some of my shots I was tracking the the surfers from the water and then they and then I would pan to the left as they were coming towards shore and then they would become really backlit heavy backlit by the sun that lens doesn't have a physical iris so I couldn't ride an iris as uh, as a panning over so I just I'm just trying out the ND audio auto and it, it's really nice. You know, one thing I really liked, now I'm glad we have, you know, we're using 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 1.2 ND. I, I just never understood the fractions ND that Sony uses on the nine and the, and the six. So this, this tells me two stops, three stops, four stops. But when you click through the ND, it's like a, it's like a really gentle like transition. It's not abrupt. It feels like really seamless. Just when you're, when you're in that end, ND step mode, they're calling it ND step versus the variable. Of course the variable, like when you roll rock through it, that's like, that's even smoother, but, but just clicking through the NDs, like up and up, it, it, it's really smooth. Did you, did you actually, did you try that out at all? Yeah, I, I, I used that a little bit, but I didn't try the auto ND. So what was your first impression? Cause I noticed on the FX6 and even FX9, uh, you would have to add some compensation. Yeah, um, I added a compensation on this one. I added like a full stop of compensation. But in terms of like um, it changing ex uh, exposure, was it fairly natural? Because I, I always felt the FX6 and the FX9 had it a little bit delay. So like when you're moving from a, a scene with a lot of highlights to a shadow, it'll take a if, almost a, a second or two for it to kind of if, think. And it felt good. Um, I got to review when we get back. I'm gonna look over the footage and I'll have a better answer then but just being out there right now uh, it felt good um, yeah and by the way this is pretty much our experiences with the fx6 and fx9 uh, transitioning to this camera yeah uh, and this is like today we it's like a really unscientific test it was just we came out to Huntington Beach early in the morning sunrise uh, to shoot surfers out on the pier like we just finish having breakfast right now. Yeah, it's mainly to, to check out the autofocuses and, and especially the E-mount lenses. Yeah. Predominantly, that's what these, this camera's for, uh, will most likely be used. Uh, obviously, well, PL. I'm, yeah, I mean, we have the you know the PL mounts and we can throw bigger, heavier lenses on there. And, you know, really, I have really nice cabrios or, you know, you know, like a, like a 17 to 120 and an FX9, like that's a staple of like reality docu-series. Like that's a typical setup you would see. And I, I, I'd imagine so that you're gonna see that lens on this camera. The, the issue that we're seeing is, um, I mean, you just gotta wait till more third party companies, we gotta get that EVF cable extended out. And I know CVP in the UK is making a cable and I think Mid49 is making a cable right now. Um, but you're gonna need it because that EVF can't kick out that much further. And when you take a lens, especially like a 17-120, where that, that lens is like very front heavy, like you gotta move, get that camera back and un underneath the, underneath the, uh, over your shoulder. And you gotta, that means you gotta kick that EVF further out. But but jumping back to the, uh, <clears throat> not to change the subject, but I, I, wanna, I wanna jump back to the autofocus. Uh, I noticed another really interesting um, aspect of the autofocus, not only it's, very natural, very snappy, and 
So depending on the settings, you can obviously change it to transition speed, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the subject, uh, basic acquisition um, catching on, and then also the manual focus or autofocus assist is really awesome. So let's say... Oh, were you racking through different subjects? Exactly, yes. You're taking it over? Okay. Exactly, and it'll just switch naturally. Mm. So smooth, there's no like hunting. Once you transition to, uh, you're, you're using the focus ring manually, mm. it'll, it'll, it'll just snap onto the next subject that, that you have on uh, in frame, which is so amazing compared to the rest of the Sony um, Cine lines that I've used before. And, yeah. and it's it's game changer uh, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Did you did you notice any of um, Jello effect when panning? Into can't tell. Uh, yeah, we got to review the footage. Yeah, I can't tell. Uh, yeah, being out there, I mean, you can't tell like if there's anything s strange. <coughs> I went through shooting 8K, 6K, 5.8K, and 4K. So I went through the whole cycle. Uh, I mainly stuck on my camera 6K and 8K OCN. I mainly shot the 6K 16x9 XAVC uh, I. Yeah. And I did a little bit of that H, XAVC H and 7 or 8K, and then the 8K uh, XOCN. Yeah. I mean, supposedly the readout uh, 5.8 and 4K is much better than 6K and 8K, but. Again, uh, we're panning pretty smoothly. It's not like yeah, and we're on sticks too. Yeah, it's not like but like we're on telephoto lenses. I mean, it might. We'll see. We just gotta see when we you know, review the footage. But but obviously the the from what I can I can tell from my monitor, the image looks amazing. Uh, I haven't imported it yet, but uh, just I felt like the dynamic dynamic range is better than the FX line for sure. Oh yeah, I, you, I, looking, cause you had a, a, you're a small HD monitor, um, yeah. but looking, uh, we did some playback on your camera and just watching that playback on, and how it's handling the highlights yeah. felt way different than a FX6 or an FX9. Yeah, it, it really. F it did remind me a lot of a Venice. Venice, yeah, so it's, it's there. there. The first thing you mentioned actually was really um, useful. Uh, the first thing you said was that it turns on really quick. So I was trying to conserve battery, thinking that I would need to conserve battery. So I brought my 150 watt hour mm -hmm. and I was turning on and off. But by doing that, normally when you turn on and off, you're gonna, you're gonna miss moments. I didn't miss a beat because it turns on less than two seconds. It feels like less than two seconds. Yeah. It's so quick. Yeah. It's all, it's, it, it almost feels as fast as my FX3 uh, turning on, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah. And that- I agree. I, yeah, I, I didn't miss many moments when I was trying to conserve battery, but I didn't have to because uh, 150 watt hour with a monitor, um, I'm getting over way over two hours. So where does that leave you? Like you know, because I I love the Amira so much, and it's kind of it's always it's filled in this premium, I would say like docu series, you know, category. So I had to look at you know what else the other manufacturers are offering, and I left you know, looking at Sony. And Sony's what's done. They've, what they've done with such a, a good job is that there's like a camera that fits in every weird scenario, like between the FX3 and the 30, six, the nine, the FR7, uh, now the Burano, and then the Venice One, Venice Two. But here's the other thing: there's there's pros and cons of Venice One. So obviously, you get all the features and and codec and license and all that stuff. But you're you're getting a, a bigger, heavier body that you have to schlep around. And then also um, the autofocus, I don't think it can even like catch, you're, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like if you're running around with, with you know, with Sony email. Yeah, e email lens package. Lens, which, which I mean, I know people like knock on it, like you're shooting on still glass, I get it. Yeah, it's it's not a Fuji Cabrio. Like I love like a 1990, uh, you know. Um, but what's, but what like these camera manufacturers are doing these days, yeah. Sony, Canon, whoever. I mean, they have the ability, like they know their lenses. So yeah. they have the ability to correct for distortion. Focus breathing. The focus breathing, like correcting for the focus breathing. Like I have some shots on the Galaxy Dock on that 600 mil lens where it's racking from the coaches and it's, there's zero breathing because like the, the camera is smart enough to compensate for it. Right. And then, um, uh, it's you know correcting chromatic aberration and distortion, yeah. like it's pretty wild what they're able to do 
with you know with two thousand dollars still photo still lenses like yeah yeah and then you know we really did get to test out the ibis today because we yeah. were on sticks the whole yeah. time but um but, but, but yeah this is the first camera right that yeah. has amazing nd yep. and ibis yep and amazing autofocus and amazing autofocus yeah autofocus assist which is I don't know what's called, but I, I want to. I think it, I believe it's called autofocus assist, but it's just where you you're, you're taking over it manually, and it, it just feels so natural. Yeah, I mean, the, I think with Sony, and hopefully the message, I'm sure they, they understand the message is coming across, but like they need to they need to clean up that EVF display. The Sony Venice has a beautiful overlay, yeah. beautiful buttons, beautiful menu. Why can't we just? Take that. Yeah, we just got to move that stuff to the sides. Like it can't be on top of the it, image. It it, they need to add false col false color. Yeah, like, that, that would help too. Yeah, if they can really, you know, this this is a this is not a FX camera. This yeah. is a there's they're they're saying it's a well, the thing it's, is, it's a uh, Cine Alta the camera. Venice doesn't have false color. So I mean, Venice doesn't have false color. Only in the EVF. Only in the EVF. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. I'll take that. At least it's something. Yeah, it's well, in the EVF. Yeah. So, it, it, but like they got to add that in there. Yeah. Like that's a bare minimum. I'm sorry, but I, I don't use zebras at all. I never use zebras. But yeah, going back to like where this this whole this camera fits in the ecosystem these days of owner operator DP, um, you know, shooting industrials or corporate jobs. Like it's gonna fit in a lot of those categories, and, and then it'll complement the the FX6s and the 9s if you own that stuff and yeah I, I like getting your return on investment like how yeah. like how quickly are you because like look th these cameras are fun and cool and we all love them to death and everything but like at the end of the day we're all running a business yeah we got to make our money back on it. I, I, I think I, I'm pretty hopeful because just the fact that this this surely replaces the FX9 and you get a little bit more features and it just and just it's just a quicker camera you can do mm -hmm. so many things on the fly and Especially not just shooting documentaries on small shows, uh, like even low budget uh, commercials. Everything is can be done just quicker with this camera. And uh, maybe we'll do a little follow up. Yeah. Cool. See ya. Bye.